Competition. The game of who gets there first and who gets left behind. Push, shove, step on. Take cheap advantage of others. graduated with honors. They'll never check on it. The important thing is to get the job. Why run the straight course? Why measure yourself against rigorous standards? Bring it back, 20,000 miles. Got a hot prospect coming. Hey, that's original mileage. I'll give you the special price. Just wait why you'll love Rocky Mud. There's golf, tennis, a big swimming pool, a crystal blue lake. You'll meet lots of friends, and there are many, many activities in the clubhouse. And you'll just love the people. You've never seen a paradise like this. I guarantee you, you'll love it. A race of a kind. A kind of contest played in other ways and other locations. Getting there on stolen identities, rigging as they run, deceiving and misrepresenting. Yet, claiming victory, taking credit, demanding the trophies, diplomas, the degrees, the recognition. That in a more perfect world would belong to those who played it straight. We are all of us given a name, have distinct appearances, individual fingerprints and signatures. But we're also recognizable through the quality of our attitudes and acts. We are known as reliable or unreliable. Our signatures, our identities can be believed or distrusted depending on whether or not we are what we claim to be, particularly in difficult times. En los seis últimos días la demanda de gas había aumentado mucho y sabíamos que íbamos a tener dificultades. Good 
One time, four. One, two, three, four. Double time. Yeah. Four. One, two, three, four. One. Some of this bag behind next time. Nobody's gonna know the difference except the feet. Come on, moaning groan. Let's get showered. It's gonna get harder. Ain't nobody gonna find out what you can do in a resort. Hey, come on. Did anybody here get dragged here? Ah, oh, look, dummies. This place here is a special place. Platoon, attention, Huns. Right shoulder, Huns. Left shoulder, Huns. Port, Huns. Order, Huns. These right are the first there. steps in the yearly Huns. continuity to a tradition offered at West Point and accepted voluntarily. Forward, march. The objective shared by successive generations has been to serve selflessly as friends of the nation with concern for personal excellence and not for personal advantage. It assumes an aptitude for leadership and asks a commitment to a standard that a person be as good as his or her word. And yet there will be some seen here who will not be, and they will be astonished and hurt, surprised perhaps by the unexpected difficulty of remaining true to oneself. The experience is hard to visualize at the start. Well, uh, it's a culture shock in the beginning. You're kind of forced to dig down and come up with enough to handle all this, but it's doable. I'll make it. I don't know in, in what shape, but I'm determined on that point. Once I got here, it was a world completely different to what I was used to. But uh, like the rest of my classmates, I adapted. Feels like I'm under a lot of pressure every day. But um, I know that I'll stay here. wanted a military career and I can't think of a better way of getting the whole thing started. You go for what you admire and I admire this. Uh, maybe it is old-fashioned but duty on a country is something that I'm not embarrassed about. A cadet will not lie, cheat or steal, nor tolerate those who do. Lie, cheat, steal, or commit plagiarism on any document purported to be original. Self-evident ethics shared by incoming classes year after year. That's what the long gone past and even recent history points out. And somehow, it seems easy to keep that principle in mind. Easy at first. But then the plebe year ends. The initial shock and excitement fade. The noise subsides. And suddenly, there no longer seems to be anyone watching. And perhaps for the first time, shortcuts to the required objectives become discernible. And in fact, there may be an almost unspoken philosophy in the air that suggests honor is only for the innocent, something you graduate from, 
one of the fraternal privileges accorded advancement. A small lie? Well, why not? A crib sheet? Only for that one dumb subject. And that missing radio everyone was yelling about. That didn't belong to anyone. Besides, those aren't the things that make any difference. Where do those kinds of rationalizations come from? Pressure, said one cadet. Yes, there are pressures. You want to talk about it? I don't think I really know what was expected. You did have an idea of right and wrong. Not in the absolute sense. What sort of preparation did you have for this step in your life? I don't understand. Why'd you come here? I got tired of doing nothing in particular. I respect some of the people who've come here. They've done things. Have you ever done anything? Done anything? <laughs> I don't think we were encouraged to go out and do anything that was harder than watching the tube. Well, I guess they thought we were too delicate. Also, it made parents feel they were the perfect providers. I was probably encouraged to play it safe. Can you explain that? Well, don't knock yourself out. Go for the security. Tell them what they want to hear. When you made application to come here, why was some of the information on it incorrect? Well, we didn't think it mattered. Well, it didn't hurt anybody. Tell them what they want to hear. Well, isn't that how, uh, how aspirin and, and cars and insurance are sold today? Well, you watch television. Three out of four doctors polled recommended for their patients. Three out of four. A consensus. <laughs> yeah, but if they said that, they wouldn't sell it. I guess that's what we grew up with. Well, isn't it? You know, you know, I, I get the feeling that, that everybody around here would be offended if, if I told them there was a world out there that, that doesn't have anything to do with this place. Where the word honor doesn't even exist. That sure hit me when I went home. I wasn't on the lookout for it either. But there it was. How many was that? Three. You mean to sit there and tell this committee that though your competitors, all prices are the same by accident? That's right. Tickets, tickets, please. Thank you. Tickets? Uh, don't you remember? Uh, I gave you my ticket. Where's the stuff, please? I left in the last car. We get new sidewalks every year. You want to know why we get new sidewalks every year? The town supervisor has a brother with a truck. <laughs> That's why we always get new sidewalks.
I was a kid with my mother. It was raining when they let some racketeer out of jail. And there were people standing, clapping on the sidewalk. Oh yeah, and there was a guy who sent a jeep back home piecemeal in envelopes. He almost got a ticket tape parade. Did you know that technology exists to build a virtually crash-proof car? What could be more ethical? The thing is, ethics and sales don't always mix. And the military isn't exempt. Honor for who? The guy on the ball field? Not if he's the hope for Sunday's game. He could wipe out Fort Knox and you people might give him a reprimand. Provided the language wasn't too offensive. You've shown outstanding ability here, and yet earlier you'd said something about homework in high school. We copied it. My father used to have his secretary type it. She just typed it. Well, sometimes she did it. The idea was to get the A. How did you feel when school was finished? I was okay. I got through. Did you feel you achieved anything? Well, in the sense that I beat the system. Some would call that an achievement. The thing was to get there. Where? Through it. Through what? Not to fail. A composite image, perhaps, reflecting the anguish sometimes brought about by well-intended permissiveness and a cynicism about honor brought on by the outside world of the flexible ethic. A case of volunteering for this four-year tryout without the benefit of earlier personal victories to draw from. And so it seems for some, there is a surprise and pain when the honor code proves to be unyielding and more difficult to live by than expected. Do you know why you're here? Coloration. Did you warn him or talk to him? I did. What did he do? Nothing. Do you think that was fair to you, knowing the box it would put you in? I don't think so. But you didn't report the incident. I did not. You see, I was brought up not to turn on my neighbor. You don't get too popular writing on friends. Toleration. To tolerate a friend's violation of the honor code, even in so-called mild or innocent situations, can have an impact on the group which lives and moves in the belief that a person's honesty and integrity need not be questioned. But it would be frivolous to say that non-toleration comes easily. It tests the moral fiber of every man and woman. And yet, as civilians, there is much we will not tolerate. In general, we abide by what is an unwritten social contract. The stewardess is certainly obliged to report the drunken pilot before departure. Hey, come on, let's get out of here! Even strangers will look out for one another when a common standard is violated. Take your mark. Rest. You, number four, out. Non-toleration. Perhaps it should also be seen in terms of the atmosphere it protects. West Point has been called an ivory tower, removed from reality. And perhaps this is so, particularly when seen as a place where an honor code makes it possible to compete for excellence 
on merit alone. Not everyone can run this course. It's only for those able to develop a deep sense of enterprise, their own personal identity with excellence. Honor takes a special type of dedication. It is not a pliable concept, good only on certain occasions. At West Point, its meaning has remained unchanged. Since tents were first set upon this field, honor has followed but a single purpose. The idea that a cadet live by the standard that he be accepted at his word, derived from the gentleman's code of honor that was a part of the officer corps of the Army of 182. Its purpose then was to allow for gentlemanly participation. There was some disagreement in those days as to what constitutes an ungentlemanly or dishonorable act. But these differences were generally settled with fists. It was in 1815, when Captain Alden Partridge became superintendent, that the idea of honor as a necessary condition was further encouraged. And when Captain Sylvanus Thayer became superintendent two years later, the principle that integrity governed cadet behavior was given sanction as one of the superintendent's own deep and personal convictions. He wrote, the honor system which we have involves this and only this, that the word of a cadet is never questioned. Nowhere had anything been carved in stone. Cadets themselves gave honor to West Point and informally assured its continuity for over 125 years. In 1921, General Douglas MacArthur, then superintendent, officially recognized the honor committee and formalized the honor system. Lying and cheating were now vigorously as well as officially pursued. And while the non-toleration of honor code violations had been the accepted standard all these years, it didn't become part of the code's detailed directive until 1970. While the code evolved and the committee was formalized and the text was refined, its purpose is, as it was, to set the basis for a kind of high personal integrity that goes beyond a career. Competition, competing without shortcut or sleight of hand to win the more enduring triumph. Honor has something to do with human capacity. The honor code is nothing abstract. It's not a cold set of rules born at the whim of a bureaucrat or a flat and colorless edict. It says in effect, it isn't just wrong to lie or cheat or steal. It's wrong to take in this way when public service asks that we give instead. Honor is a promise that goes on inside. It is an identity for whoever seeks it. General Douglas MacArthur spoke to the cadets on the occasion of his last visit to West Point in the spring of 1962. No human being could fail to be deeply moved by such a tribute as this. Coming from a profession I have served so long and a people I have loved so well, it fills me with an emotion I cannot express. But this award is not intended primarily 
to honor a personality, but to symbolize a great moral code, the code of conduct and chivalry of those who guard this beloved land of culture and ancient descent. For all eyes and for all time, it is an expression of the ethics of the American soldier. In 20 campaigns, on a hundred battlefields, around a thousand campfires, I have witnessed that enduring fortitude, that patriotic self-abnegation, and that invincible determination which have carved his statue in the heart of his people. From one end of the world to the other, he has drained deep the chalice of courage. Yours is the profession of arms, the will to win, the sure knowledge that in war there is no substitute for victory. That if you lose, the nation will be destroyed. That the very obsession of your public service must be duty, honor, country. In my dreams, I hear again the crash of guns, the rattle of musketry, the strange, mournful mutter of the battlefield. But in the evening of my memory, always I come back to West Point. Always there echoes and re-echoes duty, honor, country. When I came to West Point, it meant a career in the Army for me. I looked forward to it for about four years in high school. Upon getting here, the, the honor code and honor system took on a very important meaning, as it does, I think, with all cadets. And now, as I look forward to graduation, I, I really hope that I'm taking these values into the Army with me and in some way better the Army. I believe after three years in the military academy, you find that there's a sense of trust built up among the cadets, which helps us to develop a sense of integrity. I just think that uh, integrity and honor are essential qualities that you've got to have. You've got to be able to trust the people that you work with and that you work for. In 1920, Newton Baker, then Secretary of War, in a letter to the Chairman of the House Committee on Military Affairs, wrote the following. Men may be inexact or even untruthful in ordinary matters and suffer as a consequence only the disesteem of their associates or even the inconveniences of unfavorable litigation. But the inexact or untruthful soldier trifles with the lives of his fellow men and the honor of his government. And it is therefore no matter of idle pride, but rather a stern disciplinary necessity that makes West Point require of her students a character of trustworthiness which knows no evasions. That's all. You can go home now. feeling that comes through right now, you see, is fear. Because you don't know if you'll ever really be able to hack anything for real. Honor is the promise that goes on inside. It is the promise kept. It is a promise that can have no end.